Good evening. Kampala's near 5 million population has created the need for order and systems in transport, business and housing. And yet, as the capital city authority goes about the magnanimous role, a rift of political proportions threaten to tear apart the well-knit plans. The political class governing Kampala are yet again at loggerheads with the Tekken Co team on how to efficiently manage Kampala. And tonight on the spot we host the Lord Mayor of Kampala, Elias Lukwago. Mr. Lord Mayor, thank you so much for having honored our invitation. A warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure being part of this show. And I thank you for offering me this opportunity to share my views with the Ugandans about their capital city and about the future of the country. I must say the spotlight is on you for many things. One is the management of Kampala. The other is how business is being run in Kampala. But also something is also very personal about you. Because the, last time you appeared, to me? because the last time you appeared uh, in, in public, uh, you know, it was sensational. I, I cannot just not fail to ask you about the last time you were on TV because you ended up in, at police and uh, somebody said you were threatened. And, and actually you, came, you drove in here with quite a big number of sharpshooters. I'm not a very violent guy, by the way. So, no, so <laughs> the picture you're painting is not quite correct. <laughs> Uh, there are no sharpshooters here. <laughs> no, no. I don't have any. <laughs> no, you're just being modest. But you came with quite a robust group of people tonight. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, it would be unfair for some people who follow you uh, to jump that and, and sweep it under the carpet. Mm. Uh, but I also know you're yeah, going it's to It's a court. serious matter. It's a serious matter. Mm. Did you feel so threatened that night when you appeared on TV with a government spokesperson uh, that probably you thought that had taken to another level. Uh, would, you have, would you permit me approach it from a rather broader perspective? I will zero down to the specifics, but a broader one. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm yeah, I'll, I'll be very brief. Okay. Yeah, but the issue is, this is just a tip of the iceberg as to what is obtaining in this country. And it's a signal to all of you Ugandans that we are sitting on a time bomb. There is moral decadence, which has eaten up the marrow of the society. And it stems from impunity, impunity in this country. And that is dangerous. I want to be very direct, Mr. Lord Mayor, mm. were you assaulted. Yeah, it, <laughs> you think I can tell lies? At least I am not known to be a liar. That one you know for sure. Politicians can speak uh, with a flowery <laughs> language and paint anything because uh, uh, that is how what you can mean. the Lord Mayor that is of Kampala be assaulted by, <laughs> by an individual, yet you move with well-trained, armed VVIP protection unit? You know the rules regulating your setup here. Even where we are seated here, you don't have those guards. And... Uh, Yes, I found myself in that kind of situation. Uh, uh, but back to the issue I was raising. Of impunity. Of impunity in this country. There are people who are obsessed with the power. They think that they are above the law. They don't have any iota of respect for the constitution of the Republic of Uganda. And this tells volumes on the situation as it obtains today. You see, if you have a constitution which has got a bill of rights, and they are rights which are sacrosanct, the protection against cruelty, inhuman and degrading treatment, is absolute. The right to against the right against being subjected to inhuman and degrading treatment or is, cruelty is sacrosanct. Not only sacrosanct is non-derogable in the legal parlance. Non-derogable is absolute. 
That's how important it is. But somebody who is a government spokesperson without any provocation whatsoever, even if you're provoked anyway, should you take the law in your hands? It happens, you beat up the Lord Mayor of the capital city. Oh my God. So what is happening to ordinary Ugandans out there? You know, and in, we, we, this we, is done on camera. We, you know, just imagine I, what I, is happening. Is way, in, if you are not on camera, it was not my intention really to get to dig, dig deep into this issue. But I've also seen the avalanche of comments on social media and everywhere. Uh, people talking other things, talking about you when you're not there. So I'm like, if the Lord Mayor gives an opportunity to speak to him, I, I think it's better at least I hear from the horse's mouth. Let me tell you because. Too. How does somebody assault our Lord Mayor? <laughs> our, how? I mean, a person elected by hundreds of thousands of companions. Do you know? A uh, person would you who <laughs> is having a protection <laughs> unit trained to protect VVIPs. A person who has been invited <laughs> by a group like us. At least if you are here, I can imagine you are in the hands of MTV Uganda. You, you, you mean to make sure that you go back to your home safe, at least in this environment. It is almost incomprehensible. That if this if you may, I don't think actually you even believe me that up to now, I have not come to terms with what exa exactly happened at that time. You know, something, the least you, you expected to happen to you, the least, of course, the worst could have happened if that gentleman was armed. I would be dead now. You'd have buried me a long time ago if he was armed. The way he was huffing and puffing like a cobra as he descended on me in a very native way, you cannot imagine. But if anything... So this is what I'm saying, I'm telling you. And you are asking, is, did it really happen to you? And that is the reason I had wanted, and I still insist, I need to get that footage. I need to get so a footage. Uh, all this is happening and uh, somebody else is standing by to watch and let it happen? Who is standing by? No. Whoever was with you? No, like the moderator who was conducting the program. My brother Charles. Ma uh, Charles Mwangusha had to come to my rescue. But because he is also uh, a decent gentleman, he couldn't uh, apply the force that was required okay. to repulse him. Then Chisa, oh sorry, <laughs> when Chisa joined in, had to also come in. And then finally, the Honorable Bobari Omus. Can you imagine the incident happening in the presence of the supervisor of the gentleman who was meeting out that uh, uh, attack against him? You know, can I you imagine? Know, you know, I want to remind you at one point I hosted you in the radio studios of KFM. Mm. Mr. Lord Mayor, I remember you storming out of that studio because somebody just refused to, he was calling you Mr. Lukwago, but you wanted to be referred to as Lord Mayor. That was not and, the reason. And, and because, that's what no, I no, remember. No, 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 no. And no, because no, of no, that, no, no, Mr. No, no. Lord Mayor, you stormed out of the no, radio No, that studio. was not the reason. Where I was, where I was a moderator. No, that, that gentleman had actually, early alone, boxed me. It had happened. But you, that was in the heat of erections. Well, that man had not boxed, at least not in that studio. Not in the studio. Not why, but why, why is everybody <laughs> trying to box our Lord Mayor? <laughs> this is what I've because, told you. No, because you appeared in that That's the reason that I studio, started from that broader that studio aspect. Where, where only me and the guy whom I had, by the way, I don't even remember his name. That's the funny part. <laughs> but I remember my Lord Mayor storming out of the radio studio because somebody was referring to you as Mr. Lukwago no, and you preferred to be referred to as Lord Mayor. Be, be fair to me, that wasn't the reason. We had a history. There were antecedents. And I, really, I remember pointing out those antecedents, what had happened early alone in the field, in the heat of elections. And we had the, the way he attacked and boxed me. Yeah, I, I, I remember pointing out that. Well, I'm, but, 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 I am, but tell, I am not telling focusing you so much on. Yeah, because yeah, the, what I was saying. Because even this altercation in the studio has a it history. It wasn't altercation. Has a history. Because altercation presupposes that there is that exchange, a bitter exchange, which was not there. I was on the receiving end. I chose to restrain myself. And 
there was no way I, I fought back. I was on the receiving. Even when he was boxing and kicking me, I was just close, uh, f shading my face like this, protecting my eyes against the worst that could happen at that moment. Because anything could happen. He would spike me in the eye, and then I become blind. So I chose to defend myself by protecting my precious organs. That's what exactly happened. So this is what I was telling you. The moral decadence in the society, stemming from this impunity we are having, which is deep-rooted within the system, people obsessed with the power. You don't know how many people who have got guns. There are so many. You don't know how they are, they are bullying you. Do you really think uh, the, uh, that gentleman is so, is so powerful? <laughs> oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. Okay. If, he's, you know, if he wasn't, let me tell you this. I told you the incident happened in the presence of his immediate supervisor, the minister for ICT. What action has he taken? Not even a reprimand. So he has, he has the first he hasn't, he has. I reported to police. He's yet to be someone to record a statement. You've seen what happens to us in most cases. Even when, just on mere suspicion, you've heard the things like, uh, weird, weird things. Like uh, at preventive arrest. They say, we suspect you, Rukwago, you were about to go and somewhere and cause mayhem in a market or somewhere so in a taxi home. park, you will not leave home. But here we are. I go to police, I record the statement. It's now a week since I recorded the statement and opened up a file, and no action has been taken. The gentleman has not been interdicted. Okay. And I guess that, what? I think that's and a very, guess what? No, that's a very serious. And guess what? That's a very serious development. Yes. And guess what? No official statement from government. Yesterday, when the leader of opposition raised it, together with the shadow minister for information, Joyce Bagal, the minister was not in the house to respond. They said, okay, we shall, we shall, we shall issue a statement in a week's time. They are not in a hurry. So if you've gone to police and you want to go to court to seek justice, you, you in can your imagine. case, what, what, is, what will be justice in this case for you? What would be justice? Yes. To bring to book the, the culprit, the person who unleashed that kind of terror to the Lord Mayor of the capital city. Not only terror, but brutality. Battling me, kicking me, assaulting me, insulting me. And outraging public modest. Even by the way, outraging public modest. We have some value systems that you should respect. Some decorum. In, this, in, in, in any given organized society, there must be a level of decorum beyond which one cannot go. Where you say, oh, no, 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 no. This one is not acceptable at all. I remember Mr. M7 one time on TV was saying, I've seen people assaulting soldiers and policemen. You, the way he went livid, talking about incidents where members of the public assault policemen, and said, you, how do you, and he said, you policemen, how can that happen? Just put that person out of action. And you know what he meant? Shoot to kill. Put him out of action. If he dares you, how do you do that? Now, Mr. M7 and your government, you subject the Lord Mayor of the capital city to that kind of humiliation, that kind of despicable treatment. You, you attack my dignity. I speak with a lot of emotions because it went beyond. It went beyond, I'm telling you. You can't do such a thing. And you all the institutions of government are tight-lipped. They are all tight-lipped. The minister for, for ICT for information, tight-lipped. The police, they have nothing to say about the, the fire. How do you escalate this? And this gentleman is still in office. No action is taken. Can you imagine? How do you have we reached how this level? To, how do you escalate it to another level? Is there a way? Well, the best I could do under the circumstances, with all these impediments militating against me, is to fight a civil suit. 
in defense of my rights. So I fight the matter for enforcement of rights. And I hope, maybe, if the, just, the Chief Justice is watching this, or anyone in the judiciary, the principal judge, and whoever is responsible, you expedite the processes so that justice is done. What message are we sending to the generation, the younger generation? The people who look up to us for inspiration. Do you know there are so many, I, so many people have inspired? So many people are admiring me. I can imagine. So many people are watching programs like this, at least to get a message, to have something they can pick, and so on and so forth. And teachers encouraging children. Right now, I'm sure there are so many schools, boarding schools, they have, got, they have picked their kids, I mean the learners from their preps and what I say no this is an educative program come and watch and they are treated to that kind of sin and the minister in charge of ethics who, who is it by the way who is the minister in charge of ethics in this country who is supposed to protect generously the values that we hold dear Do we have them? as humanity those values we cherish what are our values, by the way, as a nation? At least I can talk about our country, I mean uh, society. I may not talk about the values as a country, as a nation, because we don't have a nation called Uganda. It's not there. That's a debate for another day. We don't have, we are yet to develop a nation. But uh, at least there is a community, there is a society. And at least there are certain basic values. However much, yes, we have degenerated to some levels, we are yet to behave like a beast. Even the beasts, by the way, respect I, I can, I can of a particular class. I can feel the pain, the, the tone of your voice th than ever before. And, and for that matter, I just want to leave that subject. It's very emotive to me. That issue is very, very emotive. Because I, I could not imagine somebody pouncing on me, manhandling me, pulling me like I'm dressed like this. He pulls my jacket like this. He grabs and starts kicking in the chest, punching and doing all sorts of dirty things. And is a government official. If it were an ordinary, an ordinary person, at least I would give them a second chance and the benefit of doubt. But a government spokesperson, and everybody is wondering, was he in control of his faculties? What had happened to him? Had he... <sighs> All right, I, I can understand that. I can feel the, the, the pain in the tone of your voice and the frustration not only of you, but people who support you. It's painful. And even those who know that you lead them and you lead our city. But Mr. Lord Mayor, when you travel around the world and, and meet your fellow Lord Mayors, like you were in another, such a meeting in New York about a month ago, here you are, you have a city that is, has a lot of impunity, you have a city that systems are not working. In fact, you have a city that you, as the Lord Mayor, also can be assaulted by a government official. Would you walk with your head high, like you are the Lord Mayor, considering what is happening to you as a person and what is not even taking place in the city? I'll because tell you, you lead the city that is chaotic, sir. I will not mince words. Not only city, but I'm not proud of my country. You'll be shocked. If there is anything I can now speak about with my head high, probably that brings a glimmer of some hope that probably something positive may come out of Uganda. It is the stellar performance of the authorities, the Kipsiros, the Kiprimo, the Chipragati, the Cheptegei. At least they bring, you know, it's always said every dark cloud has got a silver lining. That's the only silver lining we have. But I can't wear people dying of hunger. I mean, this plenty, like those people. You see those pictures coming from Karamoja. And you can afford to have meals of several courses with the starters, main course, uh, desserts, and whatnot. And you throw some leftovers. And, and you throw some leftovers. You, you, go to, you, you, you go to many of our garbage heaps here. Leftovers thrown there. But people dying in Karamoja. You see what is happening in, in, in Bali. And I got shocked. We is assented to the Sendai framework as a country. And there are four pillars, fundamental pillars, which you must follow to prepare for disaster response. And we have a full ministry in charge of disaster preparedness. 
disaster has happened, we can't even extricate, uh, uh, retrieve a wreckage of a, a, a car which has submerged. It's only a Harambe system. People getting ropes, they start pulling. In this 21st century, I was shocked the, minister, the Prime Minister went there and gave them just 1.5 million. And for barrier, for, I mean, funeral arrangements, I think Ms. I had Mr. Seven sending 5 million for each family. You can imagine. We don't, we, 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 can't we? Just, I, I wish you could look at the Sendai framework. That instrument is, is very, very instrumental. It's a guiding framework that please get prepared, I get to understand, profile the disasters you are prone to. That area, mountain area, is prone to those disasters. The mudslides, the floods, and what it's known. Now I had the, the, the minister, I mean the MP the other day, literally shedding tears. The, MP, the Honorable Bonambe, the chief whip, the opposition chief whip. Literally shedding tears on the floor of parliament. That even the houses they were supposed to construct for people were deep, displaced by those mudslides. They injected in a lot of money. Yeah, but and then we're in Soroti, let me conclude this. Mm -hmm. In Soroti, the, the Honorable Prime Minister, the right Honorable Prime Minister, moved in like a moving ATM machine, dishing out a lot of money. Do you know how money they spent in Soroti? To rig out, to edge out a turn from Parliament. Do you know how much money they pumped in? And in Parliament, they are debating on how to rescue, to rescue Rocco. Can you imagine? They are giving Rocco 207 billion to get it out of the doldrum where it is right now. Can't you let Rocco die and save lives? But let me, let me For me, I would rather you save one life and let Rocco die. So many companies have died. In, the own, in, in this city where you are Lord Mayor, with all respect, during heavy rains, mm. some actually people have died before yes that is true the, yeah so now, before you actually even point a finger now to, coming back to as far as in Bali, you have your own city no that, that is in chaos you see at times when you are pointing out or choosing fingers against the elected leadership in, you forget that we have a country called uganda which is actually in the same state Kampala is just a microcosm of what is happening elsewhere yes the spotlight may be on Kampala. But here is where. Yeah, I'm, I'm and, and, at Kampala, and at times people personalize it, it because, and say, because, because, ago, because what have you Kampala done in Kampala? Is, Kampala is where you are the Lord Mayor. Sir. Yes, I'm, you are I'm coming to that. You have the mandate of the people of Kampala Wonderful. to make this, make this city look good. Exactly. When you drive in Kampala's most important street, Kampala Road right now, it's in darkness. Can I tell you this? Why, why would I be driving on Kampala Road and there are no even street lights? Can I tell you this? Isn't, that, it, isn't that a shame? It's sir? a shame, I agree. Just as it is a shame to have a country where people are dying of hunger, where we are having mudslides killing people. It's a shame. So explain to the people who live in Kampala why you can't even have street lights, Mr. Lukwago. Well, <laughs> Mr. Lord Mayor. Uh, personally, I've discharged my duties. And if I had enough time to elaborate the plans we are put in place. Number one, when it comes to floods, we launched the, the Kampala Drainage Master Plan. We got consultants. We went to Africana. And we brought you, you covered the events. And we said this is now a panacea to this challenge. We have the age old problem we have had. Now we have got a magic wand, a magic bullet to this challenge. They identified the nine uh, primary drainage channels which they said must be fixed, those consultants. And we pointed them, uh, them out. Nachivo Chano, Lubiji, Nakamiro, Karidubi, that is Mayanja, Narukorongo, Chinawataka, and a couple of others. And what is required, how much is required? They said you need only 210 million US dollars. That translates to around roughly uh, 800 billion. No, no eight, yes, 800 billion. A half of what was given to Pinet to construct the Royal Hospital. Almost a roughly a half, because she was given 1.4 trillion. Now, you mean government cannot treat that, that as a priority? Because in all our budget framework papers, they are saying that is an unfunded priority. 
all we have, we had to, uh, this, I think uh, it's the intervention is made by the donor community, by our development partners, World Bank, at least they moved in. They gave us some money, 80 billion. We are now constructing Nakamiro and also Nakamiro in Kawempe to yes. drain that area. And uh, Rubiji. At least they can see some work in Rubiji. That in Rubiji. Some but also we are struggling with the contractors. Those China, Ch Ch Chinese, Mr. Seven is pampering those Ch Ch Chinese companies. They are doing sure the works. The, the works are behind the schedule. So when it comes to street lighting, I'll tell you this. We, had, we have the street lighting master plan. We launched it in, way back in 2017. Appropriation, zero. Again, we had to run to the French development agency. And we are very, very, very grateful to the French government. At least they made interventions. We are supposed to process a loan. It's now lying still in the cabinet. It's with Mr. Seven there. Because we, we don't have the mandate to direct a source finance anywhere outside the country. No, we don't have that. So they are processing it. It goes to parliament. We are, we are supposed to fix 45 uh, from this street light. I mean, from that street, master, street lighting master plan. We need 45,000 smart poles. A smart pole with the on grid but rather off-grid lights, because we wanted 25 on-grid mm -hmm. and 75 off-grid. 75 what? 75 power discharge. Okay. That is 75%. Okay. 75% 75 of the power outage. Of the particular port? No. Of the entire? The entire system network. We go off-grid, because we can't afford the umeme bills. So on grid, only 25%. Now, th they are supposed to be 20, 45. From I've this seen, loan, I've seen some from of those, this, from I've seen some of those solar powered street lights, really. The, the, the output sometimes is very no, terrible. No, no, it's terrible. It's horrible. So why would you go no, for that? No, 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 it's not that type. If you have been to Chigali, that more or less that type we want. Actually, even the Burundi, Bujumbura is better than what we have. These street, these ones, they are horrible. Right now, we have five thousand poles in Kampala, five thousand. Some of some of which have been de de vandalized, but we need forty-five. But and smart poles, smart poles with the CCTV camera ingrained there, street lights, and the Wi-Fi. Those are smart poles, uh, including actual air quality monitors, because right now we have just installed air. Previously, we have been relying on the gadgets from, I mean, the statistics, data. Data from the U.S. Embassy, US Embassy. and the uh, Makerere School of but Public Health. But Makerere has uh, uh, fabricated their own, they have made their own air quality. Yeah, they have theirs, and they have, they have really helped us with generating the data that we have been using. Air call. But we, yes, we have tried to install ours. Of course, it's all interventions of the donor community. So the French Development Agency, AFD, is supporting this program together with the European Union of installing street lights. Now we are going to install 20,000 poles if our loan is approved. 20,000 poles in addition to the 5,000 we have. With the air quality monitoring systems? Uh, within, on some of them, not all of them. I can't guarantee that. At least on some of the... Uh, the but, but, but I'm sure you are lying to the fact that uh, we are now living in a city that is highly polluted. Well, definitely. The particulate matter of no, the no, air no, no, we no. breathe is, is, is terrible. You see, when it comes to air quality, we, it's the worst we have. And um, World Health Organization, I've had engagements with officials from World Health Organizations, UN and whatnot. They are all concerned about the air quality in Kampala. It's uh, pathetic. So I don't speak. know what uh, public and health uh, officials are telling you, but it appears... We are in a zone that people are yet to know that we are breathing a dangerous air, polluted air. By the way, Mr. Lord Mayor, the city is you not see, only crowded, it is disorganized, it is crowded, it is smelly, it's bad. I understand all that. You, you have compounded up so many things. Now you are talking about solid waste management, you are talking about uh, 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 sanitation, you are talking about greening and so on and so forth. Those are all different components and different programs. 
But of course, we have the Climate Change Action Plan program, which we launched 20, in 2016 with the support of the uh, European Union, and we have been pursuing that in the area of greening, for example, to deal with uh, these emissions. Because it's not our policy now to, we don't have the mandate to come up with a policy that would limit importation of these cars. It's not our, that's a, a national but, policy. But the, the greening, I don't know what you can do. Because greening, you yes. seem to have with the finishing of your green zones, first no, of all. No, with the greening, let me tell you this, we did an audit. <coughs> We conducted an audit and established that actually we have the v a very rich biodiversity here in Kampala. Okay. We have 328 species of trees here in Kampala. 328 from the audit, the tree audit we did, we conducted. And from only one, some few, a few precincts, we started with some areas where there is a semblance of order. That is in Nakas I mean Nakasero area, Kororo, Makerere, those areas. And we, that's what we established. But there are areas with the zero trees that are, are completed. So the density, the tree density we have in, in Kampala is between uh, three to five trees per acre. Yet our target is to have 20 trees, at least a minimum of 20 trees per acre. You can imagine. So that's why we wanted to start a, a robust and a vigorous program, a vigorous program campaign dubbed One Million Trees for Kampala. And uh, we are also getting a number of uh, main supporters, a number of development agencies on board to support us. You know, and, uh, it is, uh, I, I, and know, I, mentioned I know you and I know Kampala of always having all these grand plans. And I remember the, Kampa the grand Kampala master plan and all those so many things. Even before you came in, somebody was telling us of the cable cars, of all these I, kind I of things. forget about cable but, cars. But, you, but yeah, but they are there. No, forget about but, those grand but, use plans. But, but those I plans am not are, are gathering no. mold in your office. Let me there. tell you, this, let yeah. me tell you this. For me, I don't fancy that kind of... Uh, grandiose uh, ideas. Haven't you seen them? I've seen them, and I've, I have always opposed them. But oh. they are basics. They are things that we can do, which are tangible. For example, I've talked about uh, an urban forest. And uh, we, we tasked the district land board to get us land. He told them, get us land, at least five acres. You know, you cannot have a city which has no got no forest. It's not, it's not acceptable. Mr. Lord, may I hold on to your I, point? I don't hold on to your point, sir, because we're going to take a break when we come back. We're going to look into the mass um, public transport system, uh, the, the management of salt waste, and many others. We'll be right back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guest tonight is the Lord Mayor of Kampala, Elias Lukwago. You know, earlier you began by telling us the level of hooliganism and impunity that is in Kampala. And, and of course, you experienced that uh, from somebody who should have known better. But if you go on the streets of Kampala, and, and, and with all respect, I've told you this before, because it is so pathetic. There is hooliganism exhibited by people who should know better in government offices, how they drive on the streets, for those who are driving expensive vehicles like you, sir, and making it difficult for the rest of us to use, other road users to use the road. That hooliganism has also been copped by the people who are maybe riding motorcycles, and, and everybody, I mean, police is totally overwhelmed because there's nothing they can do when you see 1,000 vehicles, 1,000 border borders, all of them going against the, rule, the rules. What can you do? That's the level that we have reached. Kampala, Toto Anake. Impunity is the order of the day, countrywide. What we are describing here is not unique to Kampala. It is pervasive across the board. Go everywhere. You can imagine it all starts actually from seven years back. I had from his home here, his state road in Nakasero. If he is to travel from Entebbe, they will sit off the road at Clock Tower and all those neighboring places up to State House before he departs from Entebbe. You will see hordes and hordes of motorcycles, uh, traffic all held back by traffic policemen, SFC, and what, all over. 
because they are waiting for one man to cross over to Nakasero. And we have wondered and asked ourselves, what is it that is keeping him here? 37 years, state house was constructed in Entebbe. What makes it difficult for him to relocate to Entebbe? All the ministries that used to be housed in Entebbe, they shifted to Kampala. So Which, you think the chaos is because of, the, of, of President Museveni's uh, motorcade on the streets of Kampala? No, 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 no. It's not only that. I am telling you, I'm giving you a picture of how we have messed up the systems in this country. Kampala, which used to be a commercial city, a hub of commerce. Historically, Kampala is a hub of commerce. It's a commercial city. It has never been an administrative city, save for those pre-colonial days when Kabaka Mutesa had his palace here. Mutesa won here at Rubiri, Mengo. That's the only time we had Kampala as both an administrative, and even then, by the way, there were proposals to create a Mengo municipality that side to carve it off the commercial enclave. Now, today, as I told you, it's a hodgepodge. Katogo. Katogo. So the administrative city was in Tebe. If these ministers, all these ministers, over 80 ministers, would be there, would be operating from there, and those who want to see the ministers, you would offload off some of this confusion you have here. If all those who want to visit those ministries or whoever, their spouses, their children, their what, they should all go to Entebbe. So in even the ministries that are, have a base in Entebbe, sometimes they don't, they don't, all of them don't go there. Which ones? At least the no, the last one was the, the Minister of Agriculture. At least, at we least don't have, no. It is the, the very it is last one was... Actually, the reason why it was shifted eventually, they said, we are feeling lonely. We are abandoned here. That was the Ministry of Agriculture. It was the last to relocate from Entebbe. And even when Mr. Museveni meets guests there, receives guests at Entebbe, immediately after discharging them, he also moves away. It's totally unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. This is a commercial city. Now, you have Kampala, you are bringing in industries here. Kamara has got his home in Kavure here, Makerere, assuming that's where you stay. And just adjacent to his perimeter wall, you have a factory. Factory owned by big shots in the government. The untouchables. I thought factories are in Namanve. They are all over here. Haven't you heard of pockets of industrial areas in Ibuais? There's industrial area in Ibuais. Namuongo is there. Where you operate from uh, at the Monitor KFM. Isn't it industrial area? In, and all those areas there. Industrial area in name. And it's not in the name. It's not in the name. There are some industries there. And even Namanve is just near here, by the way. It's within the precincts of Kampala. It shouldn't be around here. Nati Namanve was supposed to be a corridor for, uh, for uh, uh, cleaning water. I mean, it was supposed to be left as a swamp, as a forest. A, a natural filtration a system. A natural filtration system, yes. So, but now... As a, as a Lord Mayor, you don't have any leg room to create change in this kind of chaos that you can ably describe, but we just want what you can uh, prescribe as a solution for Kampala. As a solution, we've got to deal with the problem holistically. Holistically. You see, you have a regime whose priority is not about fixing the challenges we have. That's why I started from hunger. That is ravaging Kalamoja. I talked about the floods that are killing people in the, in the Erigons. I also talked about now how they are squandering monies. Mm -hmm. We have a plan to transform Kampala into a modern metropolis. We have a plan. And uh, there was also attempts to come up with a structural plan 
about neighborhood planning, a blueprint of sorts for spatial planning. And I've mentioned this time and again of the consultants we had from South Africa and Israel, and they prepared some working document for us of 500 pages. You have, you we have are processing been, it. You have never been short of having plans, Mr. Lord No, Mayor. no, no, wait a minute. This is your third time as mayor, Lord Mayor of Kampala. That's why. The, the and, and you have never been short of and, uh, and I'm not of, about of the plans. And I'm not but about the plan to that deviate. has not been, but the plan that has never been. Let me tell you, is, uh, is no the plan one, of no use for us. No as, body, as, as no body of will push me off that path, because I am convicted that that is the way to go. That is a vision you cannot get out of my mind. It's not possible. So. I will telling you this. The transformation agenda yes. requires, and actually we agreed, all the stakeholders, mm -hmm. including the central government, the then prime minister was around the, the, the honorable, the right honorable Wakana Rugonda, when we were launching this uh, 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 instrument, that we shall inject 1.4 trillion annually. Every financial year, we shall put in Kampala 1.4 trillion. Why? Because they said the Kampala is, it was given a special status. In the amendment to the Constitution, Article 5 in 2005, they said, no, 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 no. Kampala should be unique, should be different from other uh, local government entities. Should enjoy a special status. Not only in terms of governance, like they so want you're to looking do, but also in terms of you're funding. You're looking for more than 7 trillion in, in, your, in, this term of office, in your term of office. Actually, that is the budget, the, 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 the projection, not the budget, uh, uh, rather. The projection we agreed upon with the right honorable prime minister, the former prime minister, Ruakana Rugunda, and all the stakeholders. 1.5 trillion 1. every year. 1.5 trillion every year. That was the bare minimum we agreed upon. But what do we get in terms of statutory grants from the central government? Less than 400 billion including the donor funding. Of course, save for the special projects like uh, the flyover project, which is JICA. That's like a quarter of what you that do. That is JICA. Uh, less than a quarter less, almost. Less than a quarter. I've always mentioned that, look here. How do you have a capital city with the, a total red network of 2,110 kilometers, but only 30% is paved? And you call that a capital city. And then you, put, you push the blame to the border borders. How can you have a capital city where you don't have any semblance of a mass transport system? Where is it? But uh, let me ask, where why, is why, it? Why, 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 okay, I know money should be appropriated to you. Yes. Because you have a plan and the plan needs The money. plan is there. I mean, but to see the Lord Mayor also agonizing with the rest of us. We expect you to be organizing Kampala, but not be lamenting with the rest of us. Let me tell you this. You will bring here people who even serving in the 70s government. Mm -hmm. They will also be agonizing. Just bring here one LOC, one LOC 5 chairperson of any district, including Chiruhura, where I'm seven comes from. If you don't, do you know even the chairperson of Chiruhura? Where I'm seven comes in Chiruhura district, if they will not lament here. Because, let me tell you, from the budget, mm. local governments are getting 17% of the national budget. 17. But the, the entire local government but, set up. But Uganda's entire GDP is within your capital, at least the greater Kampala. Yes, from the Wakiso. statistics, it is 70%. If you looked at the, 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 the funds going to the consolidated fund, and their budget. 70% is good in yes, from Yes, right now we are talking about a budget of 47 trillion, the national budget. Forget even about the GDP. Just talk about the budget itself. Yes. 40, uh, I mean, 70% of the revenue going to the consolidated fund is from here. Is from here. We passed a resolution in the council and said, please. And all you're asking for is 1.5 trillion. That is roughly 3%. We told them just 3% of the budget. And you see wonders here in Kampala. We shall fix the drainage system. We shall work on the street lights. We shall go, go recycling because we have the plans. 
what does it take to do recycling? For me, I don't even talk. I don't even want to talk about this you know, pick and dump that, 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 that we buy trucks. Can you imagine even the, the most elemental thing? We said we have 99 parishes. Can't we have only one refuse truck? These self-loading trucks. Mm -hmm. Only one truck. Each truck costs around roughly 800 million. 800 million. 99 parishes. At least to pick and dump garbage at Chitezi or Dundu where we have 135 acres of land we bought. Not even talking about recycling. You ask me some seven. We said, can't we even build the markets the other day? We are talking about work expenses. <laughs> you are talking about, I hear, I, sometimes I hear these people and I feel sorry, I feel pity. Uh, I, I mean, I, 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 I sympathize with this because they don't know, mm -hmm. especially the elites when they talk about issues of street vendors and what not, you, you ask them, look here, can I teach you the basics, what the success stories have done, I mean, those cities you admire, what they have done? It's very simple things. Very, very simple thing. You, so you so, so, uh, let me tell you one thing. For example, social security systems in place to address the question of the urban poor. Common user facilities, for example, markets. The other day, the right honorable minister was in Vuseye. We have spent 45 billion, not us in KCCA. It is the Minister of Local Government, mm -hmm. which was borrowed from the ADB. Way back in 20, 2010, can you imagine? They started constructing Busega market in 2010. We got it alone when I was a member of parliament. Twelve years later. Twelve years later, the market is yet to be occupied, but it's leaking. So far, 45 billion is gone. And they are saying it's going to accommodate only 1,000. Many people within the ministry have already allocated themselves stores. And then you victimize the urban poor who are just roaming around the streets to, to make a living. And then you say you are the problem. When somebody has occupied their space, then I, so, saw, so, so I saw the so minister talking, tough, I'm going to sit here and see that these people are oh, happy. Isn't it that very is hot air? Isn't hot it air. very frustrating? You know that woman Mr. can Lord. grow hot and cold. Mr. She Lord can Mayor, grow hot Mr. and cold. Mr. Mayor, isn't it very frustrating on your side that every time the people giving you a mandate to lead Kampala, you do not have the leg room to execute your manifesto because nobody's, they are not giving you the funds. Probably they are not even listening to you. But you still go back to the people to give you the mandate. But that mandate is not, you know, it's given, but the manifesto is not executed. Do you think the mandate is only about fixing those issues? It's also because, about to the national agenda. Because you have a contract with the people of Kampala. Yes, that to do contract. ABCD. That contract but, is but not. But you are not doing it. No, you are misconstruing it. It's not premised on that agenda you are talking about. That is a small component of it. It's a small component, I'll tell you this. So what's the bigger component? The bigger component because if is you have about delivered for Kampala. The bigger component is about fixing the national challenge the question, addressing the national question. And I don't want to mince words. Yeah, I know. But dealing if, with the if the political or, space is shrinking, the other in Soroti, you see, it's shrunk now. It's going to shrink in Bukimbiri, in in Kisoro, and where, where there is where there is a by-election and, and other places. So where where is the fighting room that you have le you're left with? It's the reason we are not seated. We are ever scratching our heads, exploring the available options, reaching out to colleagues in different formations, and always you know, there juggling, are people, there are people who have been moving in a boat of the Democratic Party. The captain has actually left uh, the boat, has disembarked, and the boat is about to sink. And you think you are headed anywhere? Is he the first to go? And well, are you suggesting is, is, is going to be the last? He can predict. Uh, what I don't, I, what I don't I need know, to be a prophet. For many for many six, will go. For 60 years, DP has not even gotten anywhere near. What I'm trying to say is that for for many sake, I'm not DP anyway. formidable political and, uh, party uh, leaders, mm. really, in the opposition, have not been so united and so strong. Just the other day, mm. we saw a gentleman of, of great repute disembarking. What does that tell you? You're in disarray. <laughs> you mean the forces of change that could have maybe helped and take us through, uh, through Uganda from to see Uganda from their prism 
are disintegrating. You Actually, you were the first to go. The first? Before, before Mr. Mao, you left. Oh, I, 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 thought you, I thought you were saying I crossed the Rubicon. No, you, but still you crossed. I am, I'm still, <laughs> still you crossed. <laughs> These are two <laughs> part entities with different political ideologies. Uh, you see, if I may expound on that, uh, having a political, I've been uh, at the forefront since my youthful days, uh, fighting for restoration of multi-party democracy. And uh, I put in quite a lot, quite a lot. And that cannot be wished away, thanks to the initiatives of Dr. Pokanga Semogeri and the, his contemporaries. I did my best. But along the way, Mr. Seven wanted to seize these political parties, hijack them, and cause what actually you are expound, we are explaining public despondence that these parties mean nothing to you. That's why you can have the UPS on board, you can have DP, and he's struggling to get these other ones also in his fold. Basically to cause that kind of frustration. And to a greater extent, yes, there is the frustration within the public domain that I concede. There is also a sense of hopelessness. A sense of hopelessness because People, uh, uh, Uganda, Uganda is not like Kenya. You see, like Kenya, what is happening right now, where they have term limits, uh, however hot the direction is, of course, it's going to be tough come Tuesday. It's going to be tough. And that's why uh, uh, there is tension in Kenya, there is tension here, there is tension everywhere. But I'm sure. The, the, the Kenyans still have, including Ruto, because he's likely to lose anyway. Uh, he, can, <laughs> he cannot defeat that alliance. The alliance between Ruto, I mean, Raila La, La, and, and Uhuru. He can't defeat that alliance. Now, but he, he, he is, he will have his hopes alive. He will keep his hopes alive. Why? Because he knows that this man cannot go beyond a 10 year mark. He has. They he are has, he has, he has Forget about the age element. He has time on his side. He has time on his side. He's still youthful. And, but here we are in Uganda, where elections do not mean anything, where Mr. Museven has, culti uh, has created an image of an infallible lead person that he can rule for life and uh, create a dynasty of sorts. Then oh. his son or wife takes over. So that is the kind of situation we are dealing with. But, uh, so where are you getting that from? Of course, this is what is obtaining in the country. There is a constitution and there is a timetable. <laughs> for, change, for, for changing of leaders. <laughs> but hold on to your point, <laughs> yeah, uh, Mr. Lord Mayor, because we're going to take a break. And when we come back, I'll open the line so that you too can have a say on this show. You're going to see the numbers on the, on the screen. Pick your phone and tell us what you think, uh, how Kampala is. In case you disagree with the mayor, that's okay. That's what we call debate. But please disagree with respect. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamara. I'm standing on this magic wall so that they can be able to pick the comments that are coming on our social media platforms. I'll be reading the questions so that the Lord Mayor can be able to respond to you. In fact, let me go for a question that has come from Simon Vuni from Arua City. And he's saying, thank you very much, the Lord Mayor Kampala City. I am so grateful and I appreciate your program. I would like to know as a leader, what precautions have you taken to assist the people affected by recent natural disasters? Go for it, Mr. Lord Mayor. Natural disasters in Kampala or elsewhere in the they country? They have been here in Kampala as well, yes. In the, in the city here, yes. we don't have a budget for 
disaster response. That is the national government where they have the minister in charge of disasters. And yes, precautions, we need to fix the infrastructure. And we are doing this. We are trying our level best. We are trying to fix the drainage system, like I've told you. We, we worked on the drainage master plan. We need 210 million US dollars. So far we have 210 gotten, million US dollars? Yes, so far we have gotten support That's from almost like a trillion Uganda shillings. That's roughly 800 million, 800 billion rather. And we have so far gotten support from the World Bank. And we are still so reaching out, engaging different development partners to assist us fix the drainage system in Kampala. And also in the infrastructure, we have gotten some support from ADB. We are going to work on a number of roads, Sentema Road. So, Mr. Lukwago, are you saying Salama this Road. money cannot yes. be locally sourced, the 800 billion? It's like a squeezing water out of stone <laughs> get, to get this money from Mr. Museveni's government. Let me, let me also pick for you an, another comment here. Whatever is happening in Uganda is like a tyranny which will never change until, until I don't know when. Somebody is also sending that one. Uh, do you believe, Lord Mayor, you are in charge of Kampala City? Instead of blaming other leaders, first sort out the mess in your constituency. The capital authority has a huge budget, but we are not seeing value for money. That is a, some, some, somebody called Kasede in Jinja. How do you respond to it? I do my best because mine, I don't deal with the cash directly. I don't do the approval. I mean, rather, I don't deal with the signing of the contracts. Mine is largely oversight. Just like, I mean, it's the role of parliament and others. But we do our best. I but you know, you the people who have given this mandate, Mr. Mayor, are expecting you to be able to have also the, make things move. But you seem no, to be, look here. You seem to be lamenting no, and lamenting like the rest of us. I'm not lamenting. Recently, I issued a state of the state address. Uh, I issued a statement. And I brought out, I unearthed all this rot. I showed to the country, and I have to, I presented it before Parliament, that report, where they are spending 10 billion to construct a kilometer of a road in Kampala here. And I said that is totally unacceptable. However much we are struggling to get money from the donor fund community, from the development partners, this money shouldn't be squandered. We must, uh, that's why I'm insisting on probity, value for money. Can you imagine each unit costing, unit, a kilometer costing 10 billion? Salama Road, for example, no, not Salama Road. I'll tell you, Kakashia Road here, uh, uh, together with the Kurambiro Ring Road, it cost 84 billion, 90 billion rather. 90 billion Uganda shillings. Wait a minute. From uh, the Akashia Road to, 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 to Kamocha? Yes, 90 billion. Bunamaya Rueza Road, that one from uh, 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 Kabusu to Rueza. It is 80 kilometers. It costs 84 billion Uganda shillings. Rukulinanganda up to Munyonyo. It is just 7 kilo, 80 kilometers. It costs 75 billion. Okay, let that me also tell unacceptable. Okay, let me let me look let me look for another comment here. If it was Lukwago who attacked OO, oh, right now Lukwago would be in prison, but because it's OO, the laws won't work, and that's... The they would have evicted me from <laughs> Stay Home a long time <laughs> ago. Uh, somebody is talking about your, uh, the earlier problem. This is what I'm saying. Actually, if they attempted to evict me from Stay Home, that botched impeachment we have always talked about, Okay. without even a clear offense against me, up to now, if, if you ask them what was the reason they were impeaching me, they can't explain it. Okay. But if I had boxed him, by right now, I wouldn't even step at stay home. I would be in jail. Actually, I would, let, let, let's I, get I would be sent to the gallows. Let, let me pick for you other comments that have come from Isingiro. We have uh, David from Isingiro. He says, we are proud of Lord Mayor. He's a great debater. There's your, po your supporter in Isingiro. I am, I am humbled, my brother. And uh, my name is Kayongo Tom in Sembavule. The Lord Mayor is working very well. The friction is caused by the government to bring an idea of making him only for ceremonial. Thank you so much. That, that's uh, a gentleman called Kayongo in Sembavule. Actually, it's a paradox. And you the services from me when the regime is saying I should be ceremonial, putting on my gowns. <laughs> and and the preside over functions. That sh that's all I should be doing. You look good in your gown sometimes. <laughs> 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 I will find that. And uh, somebody says, for sure the government spokesperson did bad, Lord Mayor. For sure the man was as if he's the Alpha and Omega in the country, Uganda.
Uh, you have a lot of support, I think, from uh, on social media tonight, don't no, you? No, the public was outraged about this. Let me tell you, it's despicable. That kind of uh, uh, violence. And this government is condoning. By the way, they have always accused us of being violent. But now you can see how violent they are. You can imagine what happens behind the cameras there, in safe houses, in those dark, dark dungeons. What happens there? Where they are pricking off uh, nails, where they are squeezing people in their private parts. But, but, but you have, you have been horrible. you have been arrested before. You have they have taken safe houses. I mean, you go and come back like you have entered there. You, I mean, you have not. Uh, you, you have come back uh, looking great. You're looking as usual. So, in other words, I know maybe emotional torture and stuff like that. But do you believe in the statement you are making? Haven't you seen people coming out deformed? I've seen you, Lord Mayor. People Mayor. maimed. People maimed? I see you, Lord Mayor. Oh, my God. You have, been t you have, you have taken no. in and out. You have been taken honestly, in and out many times. Honestly, Kamala, be fair. You've seen people who come back here without the limbs. People who are maimed. People who are in wheelchairs. People who are nursing wounds right now. Even those who are beaten in parliament in broad daylight. Like the Honorable Nambose is still destined in a, wheel in a wheelchair. She's right now out of the country on treatment. And okay. you, you, you can me, afford to say that we come out, f uh, I mean, in, the, in, in good shape. Let me, let me tell you, let me br bring for you what Danielson is saying. I really feel perturbed having watched that fight on social media. It was so embarrassing. I really loved the calmness of the Lord Mayor exhibited that day. We need to pray for our I country. wish the public would review the, f the full footage. And that's why I'm still craving and struggling to get it so that you can see exactly what happened. If you're horrified by what you saw, that's just a, a sneak peek of what exactly happened. Just a snippet. But if you are to get the full text, the full footage, I don't know what you will have to say about it. The okay. way I, was I, I just want to pick maybe three or four, <laughs> four more views from uh, Ugandans who are sending messages on our, plat on our social media platform so that maybe uh, that will be taking us to the end of our debate tonight. And if they can, somebody is saying, if they can attack Lord Mayor like that in the studios of a national TV, oh my God, how about the, me, Omuntu Awansi? He says, Uganda is bleeding. And he's, somebody says, you, you, the world has come to an end. Great oratory from our Lord Mayor. Great how dare can such an incident anguish our national broadcast in the observance of our little ones? But Uganda, we have been we have talked about so many other issues. I'm wondering why you are picking only the issue that happened. Your Lordship Polesana for the assault incident. Glad to see you. You are healthy. Meanwhile, the law allows you to issue municipal bonds as way of rising finances. Your council just won't apply its mind to oh, I wish I can ways of more on the municipal bonds. Thank you. Bonds. The show. Best wishes from Joseph Burite. Wonderful. Uh, should I respond to that? Yes, to Joseph Burite. Yeah, uh, actually, if we, we get another time to debate on the cost of uh, 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 being capital here, it's quite, quite appalling. Even before you talk about municipal bonds, right now, when the economy is in a base, is in the doldrums, actually, we, we, we are having a huge crisis, the government instead of making some intervention, deliberate interventions, they are now taking steps to increase the bank rate. You can imagine, bank rate. So they, are they, are they are taking a positive step by bringing it down to 6.5. But now just within the space of two months, they moved to 7.5, now it's 8.5. And now they, are they, 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 they don't even want to cap it. So before we even talk about the municipal bonds, so how are you going now to redeem the economy when you are raising the bank rate? You're increasing the cost of production, the cost of, I, I think of that being that business. I think in their, in their thinking, that can easily you know, cut down on the, on, on, on the inflation, to, to rein in the inflation. How, how now? Because uh, I suppose yes, you, you yes. feel the appetite of people going to get more money from the bank, the loans and stuff like that. Yes, you, once you increase it, you are reducing on liquidity. Yeah. But at the same time, you, you, you want now to get the economy from, because we have suffered the shocks from COVID. We have suffered these shocks from the, the, those external forces, the factors in Ukraine and whatnot. 
and the, 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 the fuel prices are going uh, up. They are skyrocketing. And now you are saying you are re reducing the liquidity from the economy. I don't know where they started the economics from. All right. let I, let I, let I am not surprised that in, in, in national TV, <laughs> when Mr. Musafir was supposed to come and give us short-term short measures. He'll be addressing us tomorrow night. Yes, so <laughs> I'm not, I, I hope you'll not bring back scientists <laughs> because we don't want th those things of, <laughs> of uh, uh, electric vehicles. We don't want them. We want immediate solutions, the long-term solutions. Uh, there's another, another, another listener, a viewer here, says, to fix Kampala public transport, why can't KCCA explore PPP since they have no money? Is it ignorance or failure by the leadership? Housing sector, why can't KCCA push for a change in land law to kick out slums in the city? Do you mean well for the city or you are politicking for survival, Mr. Lord Mayor? PPP. Urban housing, why can't KCCA encourage a change in tax policy by pushing for a waiver in tax for building materials for investors in the real estate in the city like Nairobi has done to reduce the housing deficit through affordable homes? But which tax is that now imposed by KCCA on building materials? Which tax? Do we impose any tax on building materials as KCCA? He, I think that is that uh, that that, op that uh, opinion is misplaced. He's talking about uh, maybe now. Maybe now they are talking about uh, no, the, the fundamental issue they are raising is about uh, uh, housing. Um, um, no, rather uh, PPP, the PPP arrangement. Th th that's a good idea. PPP. PPP. Mm. That we, since we don't have enough money from the central government, we can go into the PPP arrangement. Actually, the law allows it. But the PPP arrangement is in, cannot thrive here, where you have um, these pseudo capitalists. Let me tell you here: we have cartels. You will land into mafias. Even that's what uh, will happen in municipal bonds. With the municipal bonds, they would even take over these facilities. You hear the saga, you know, you know. Mm -hmm. You have heard what is happening in St. Dembe. You've heard Wusafi. Wusafi cost 43 billion. But do you really believe that it cost 43 billion? Those structures there and so on and so forth. So you land in, in the hands of cartels and they will end up take over those facilities. If you go into municipal bonds and PPP. PPP would work if you had genuine investors. And, but it's difficult now in this kind of environment this environment which is intoxicated to get who is I, I, I know I know I know you, you say you want to, to change that toxic environment you want to, you, you're focusing on the entire country and somebody is saying an opposition that cannot recruit 30,000 people to man their votes are jokers in a democratic process you claim after every general election that yes. elections were rigged but you don't know how many votes you got I, I wish that gentleman would venture into our world how do you know it's a gentleman? <laughs> I, <laughs> okay. Uh, you mentioned the I think I had. Okay. <laughs> okay. So so be yeah. lady. Mm. No, let me mention this. Just in the, in the recently concluded by election in, Isolo, in the Soroti. I was there personally. There is a polling station called Otatai. They finished the polling and there were residue materials. These people decided to get the remaining ballot papers, started ticking. At gunpoint, they said, You keep quiet. Ticking, 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 ticking. They finished all of them 100% and stuffed them in the. And then they started counting and celebrating. So, what do you do with that kind of impunity? Open the uh, thuggery. What do you do with it? That brazen thuggery, which has happened, and you have no. You are helpless. They arrested poor, the party president, and over 100 agents over a turn. They were detained as far as. Uh, uh, Dokoro. Dokoro is away from Soroti. They were taken to Bukedia. There is a polling station, I think it's Amininiti. Tango Doi was there. You call him. You, 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 you cross-check with him. Tango Doi and his team, they, uh, they arrested the agents. Agents were kept away of our turn, our candidate. And after the polling exercise at four, they started counting when the agents were not there. And uh, after telling the, the, the results, the, the ballot papers, and filling the DR forms, they realized they needed these agents to sign. So they were picked from the prison where they had been detained, brought back here to the polling stations, forced them to sign DR forms, and they were taken back to the cells. So what do you do with such a, a, a scenario? What do you do?
under such circumstances. So this is the reason we have so said. You have surrendered. No, we have not surrendered. We went to Africana with NOP, FDC, PFT, uh, JEMA, and other well-intentioned Ugandans and said, ladies and gentlemen, hey, it doesn't make sense to draw daggers against each other. Let's collaborate. Let's link up. Let's work out synergies and confront the bull, confront this but elephant. I, mean, I just don't understand. When you come together, it is still the opposition that will, that has been maybe sharing the votes. Now you bring. You no, it's not about the votes now, or whatever it is. No, 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 it's not about all the you votes. need is to find a way how you can recruit from NRM. This one is it's because if you don't to recruit NRM, no. you still share the usual group that is opposed to Museveni. The and prism you are using is wrong. This is what I'm telling you. Put on different lenses. We are not talking. Do, are you aware that he, even if it is not votes, you need to make it clear to the people who are opposing you, NRM, to come to you, to, to see Uganda from the way you look at it. Unless you recruit we from We them by the collar, oh. we, we, uh, we pump, we beat them, so, we beat uh, so, sense so, into so, their heads. So, so when, 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 Dr. Dr. Besige, when Dr. Besige and yourself and the Honorable Chagulani work together, how does that increase the numbers? Uh, 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 uh. This is a liberation struggle. With the liberation struggle, by the way, it's not about the, the ballots you are talking about. It's not about the numbers. It's about those who are committed to liberate the country. By the way, when Museven went to the bush, he said there were only 27. But now he's having over five, uh, 300 MPs. He's having so many MPs and whatnot. But we are saying, look here, even Obote had them in, their, in, in his government. Once Museven uh, carried out inroads within the regime, they had to fall. So to how does your coming suit? together Eating to Museveni's core base that he has used to beat you. D let, me times. let me tell you this 95% or even above of those who are in NRM are hostages. It's not by, it's, they are not there by their conscience. So, so your coming together will, is, will make you attractive and they'll come to you. Because if you do that, that's what I want yes, to know. Because unless, you, unless you are able to recruit from them, it's not you about recruiting. Beat them. It's not about recruiting, hmm. liberating them. Because I've told you they are captives. They are hostages. They are being held there against their conscience. For us, we are capitalizing on the people of Uganda. Tell that to Nobat Mao. Tell that to Nobat Mao. Because people power. Tell that to Dr. Saranda. People power, the might of the people, is not about the handful of the captives who are within the, 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 the confines There's of the There's a video that's been circulating of the Honorable Mwanga Kivumbi in his own constituency. Mm. It looks like the people are not very happy. I'm, I'm yet to No, read. don't follow <laughs> prayer to those bad Well, I've just seen something like no. that. No. That could be something choreographed. Don't f so for so pray. I mean, f pray. I for am that. not. I no, it can be. I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. Let me tell you. I told you, venture into our world. You'll know. It's <laughs> dirty. What's gonna be? Anybody I can. Anybody can manufacture that clip you are you are hyping here. So I have told you it can be choreographed by his opponents, and I'm sure it's choreographed. Mwanga is one of the finest we have in this country. I don't doubt And that. I always, I, I always, I always uh, describe him as a senator. That's you, why I'm bringing You know, it, the way he carries himself. That's why I'm bringing he's it not an ordinary MP. That's why I'm bringing it very cautiously because... If we had a bicameral he's a, parliament... He's a man of substance. If we had a bicameral parliament, he wouldn't be in the Congress. He would be in the upper house, the Senate. Yes, that is the quality we are talking about. So you, you, you can't subject him to that kind of... Wow. So the point I, want, I was making here, mm. look, our coming together, first and foremost, is to rekindle people's confidence. Mm -hmm. Because now there is a state, there is that kind of hopelessness which we have within the body politic here. Ugandans are at a loss as to what is going to happen next. Many have resigned to fate, by the way. They are waiting for the natural factors to happen to Mr. Museveni. That country will be in, in disaster. I looked at the campaign Raida was making. I don't know whether you witnessed it. You saw this clip. At, it was at a rally. And he, say, he felt, he said, we feel insulted to be compared to Uganda. He said, how do you compare Kenya to Uganda, Somalia, 
uh, Ethiopia, South Sudan. You can see the ridge where he put us. No, you know, that, that, let me just say, uh, read for you the very last comment that has come here on the screen. Mm. And somebody is saying, I'm Udaya in Ikseni Kampala. Please, Lord Mayor. The Stalling Company always sell materials for the road. Uh, uh, Udaya, is this true? Hi, Mr. Lord Mayor. Please enlighten us on the issue of chasing of border borders in the city. God bless. Well, I can imagine. I'm told Metro Producer is telling me um, yeah. the, 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 so the comments issues. are too many, but <laughs> our time is out. I'll um, put starting your notice. Okay. This is, has come to your attention. Most of those, the, the Rukuli Nanganda was talking about that road was constructed by starting. And when we were launching these new roads here, mm -hmm. the ADB roads, I put them on notice. It's okay. not going to be business as usual. All right. Let me let we me are going to chase them away. Okay. That, yes. po that point has been made. Let me conclude with this past, this uh, issue here. Lord Mayor, thank you for the work. We are expecting rains this August. How safe are Kampala dwellers, especially in slums against waterborne diseases? This is a, the challenge we have always been grappling with. Mm -hmm. We have been crying over a dry spell. We have had this long dry spell. But on the heels of this dry spell, we are going to have floods like it's happening in Imbali. Mm -hmm. And this is a national crisis. It requires a holistic approach. This is what we're saying. How, because there is no way we're going to deal with the floods here unless we fix the drainage system. There is no way we are going to deal with the famine unless we have irrigation schemes in this country. This, it doesn't require rocket science. And these are the issues we are pushing for. And we are saying this should be considered as a national priority. But you can imagine in the budget of 47 trillion, 47 trillion, 13 trillion is going to purchase military hardware. Are we at war? How do, we buy, how do you buy military hardware in a country where people are dying of hunger, where you have floods? So all this boils down to that issue. You may call it lamenting, but I uh, cannot just go and uh, grab somebody who is sitting, I don't know who the governor bank, of, of, uh, governor who is now in charge of our funds at the central bank, maybe Kashaija or what. I am not going to go and uh, grab him by the neck and say, please give us money. It's up to the people of Uganda, and that's the reason we are here to explain to you that these people are squandering your money. The, uh, the, the state house alone, the classified expenditure, he's horrible, he's outrageous, he's okay. obscene, it's obscene. Okay, Mr. This Lord. This is the thing we are talking about. Mr. Lord Mayor, our time is out. And, uh, the time is out, but uh, the What's going to be your parting shot? My parting shot is that Ugandans, please, give a chance. You may be having your own doubts, your own skepticism about the new arrangement we came up with the front we are starting up together with our colleagues in NOP and other party formations. But please, we believe this is a situation which calls for everybody to move in a chain with those who want change. Mr. Lord so Lord. whether it is NOP, my parting shot, the very last one, if you are in Buru, like myself, and you have somebody, who your neighbor, and he means well for this country, and is in, in a red nope. Just hold your hands together. We face Mr. Museven and cause change in this country so that we can enjoy what God gave us as a country. Thank you so much, Mr. Lord Mayor Elias Rukwago. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for having accepted the invitation and having responded to the questions from me and from the people who have sent them via our social media platforms. And I want to thank you for the company, for the, for the pleasure of your company. Good night and God bless thank you, Uganda.